So my friend Jake has this epic hat that I have been jealous of for a very long time. And I stole it from him for a day. And essentially this hat's really kind of cool because he found it in a barn. They have this youth outdoor program where they take, him, they take kids that are troubled youth out into the wilderness and they teach them skills to kind of try and help them to cope with and be better in life essentially. And the building that they have, they found this old hat in and I just thought it was epic. I like the shape, I like the design. It kind of remi reminds me of growing up on a ranch, and I brought it in to get it replicated to the best of the ability there. So tell me a little bit about that thing. Well, so we've made Jake another hat in a darker color to you know, replicate this, mm -hmm. and uh, that's kind of what we can do here, no problem, is to replicate a hat from history or something that looks very good that's worn in over time and kind of gives some distress and look and feel that, that someone earns technically over yeah. many, many years versus us just making it here in the shop. So. Um, to break this hat down, it has exactly a three and a half inch brim. Uh, three and a half inch brim is a good size brim to get, stay covered in the outdoors. It's a desert it, brim. Yeah, yeah, it's not a customary four inches like most cowboy hats. Um, most cowboy hats are going to have a little bit of rodeo style. You can imagine what that might look like, which uh, gets rid of some of that brim width. But this one, we're you know keeping flat, or he likes to drop it flat and then then snapped in the front to give him plenty of coverage. Um, hat utilitarian, hat. very yeah. utilitarian. And next point of that is the crown is just about four and a half inches tall. So four and a half inches tall is not a tall crown and it's not a low crown. That's right in the middle. So it makes for it easy to sink down on your brow, cover your head entirely, keep you cool when necessary, keep you warm when necessary. Keep the rain um, off. You yep. know? Yeah. Next aspect is it's got two rivets and a stampede string, which we make those here in the shop as well. Um, those are very cool pieces because they can be customized, they can be made longer. Um, this one's actually sitting up out of the way when he doesn't need it, then he can drop it down around on the front of his chin when he does need it. And stampede strings work well to keep you know, your hat on your head or the, the hat on your back when you're in a situation like canoeing or crossing the river or you don't want the hat to blow off and it's around your neck kind of thing. Yeah. And that's, um, that's just the, the thing that I was looking for specifically is I like to be very utilitarian. I'm wearing a lot of strange things because they work, not always because they match, yeah. but because they work. And that's what I really liked about this design. And uh, I know from the military, I'll take a boonie cap and run that string tight in the back of my head and the wind won't take it off, the rain won't take it off, and that's one major key about this hat specifically that I wanted to keep. So another uh, you know, design aspect is it's got a teardrop crown, which makes for two tight pinches in the front, which makes for easy grabbing. You can see it's been grabbed so much that there's some you know, finger, stains. finger stains and grease and oil that have stayed there and look cool in the hat. So um, then color, you know, I think it's a good, the bone colors are very good color to have outdoor. It gets dirty, but then looks good over time. Yeah, and it keeps your head from black, just absorbs yeah. heat in the canyons, it radiates crazy. So. Cool. The science of head shapes is called uh, formology. So, you know, 150 years ago, formology was a very, very 
trendy science and before we had fingerprinting they thought formology was the best way to measure a part of the body specifically the head to, to understand the difference between ethnic um, races but and, and just intelligence and then then understand who they were dealing with so this tool was created in france in the 1840s 1850s um, it's called a uh, a uh, conformator excuse me i had to remember the conformator so it slides down on top of someone's head and everyone was relatively smaller then so it the biggest size that it really can fit at these days is about a seven and a half which doesn't allow me to put it on my head, essentially. But you can see these little fingers, which are all made of wood and mother and pearl and these hand-turned screws. These will adjust and make, essentially, a one-third scale shape of someone's head when it's on their head. We can slide a piece of vellum or paper in there and then get that impression, and it makes an exact, once, once again, third scale shape of their head. So couple of 10, 20 years later, a, a really smart English hat maker made this tool, which is the four million. And so that little depiction that we made from our conformator can then be set and we can raise this and adjust it so we get the exact shape, whether it looks like a peanut or it's heavier on one side or the back. This exact shape will allow us to then use as a tool to shape up the inside hole of a hat awesome. when the customer's gone. Very cool. So we do use this on occasion. We don't use it every day, um, but it's a very unique piece of history that's been adapted for the hat business. And, you know, there's, it's a one of a kind thing. That's really cool. A so, little bit of history of, of our shop. We, we call our brand Tat and Baird. So my name is Chandler Baird Scott and we're at Tat and Baird Hatters. Um, John Charles Tatton, who is this gentleman right here, was the very first hat maker in the state of Utah. Started making hats in the 1850s, very rudimentary. They just needed, you know, some, some things to cover their heads and, and it wasn't high fashion quite yet. It quickly became high fashion, the hat. But um, back then it was really just a tool to be outside and to be working in the weather and to protect your head. So this gentleman had made hats as a young man in Lancashire, England, and with his skills was recruited by Brigham Young essentially to be the first hat man. So a lot of the equipment we have here in the shop comes from um, you know, the, the original uh, hat history that was started by, by John Charles Tatton. So um, our equipment had been serviced and used by a, a family that ran it consecutively three generations through almost 90 some odd years and then we you know required it here from my mentor which I had learned from about 15 years ago um, so Utah has a lot of hat history hat history that's starting before Stetson even made a hat and um, and we just try to carry on that that uh, heritage here with the way we're making it and using the processes that were originally done we, we make our custom sweatbands here in the shop and the way we do that is measure someone's head so we're getting an exact fit versus making a size of hats. Most hat brands are seven and a quarter, seven and three eighths, seven and a half and, and so on. What we do here is measure someone's head and, and most people are in between sizes but we make that exact measurement and according to the size or um, shape of head. Some people are narrow, some people are a little bit wider, some people are long ovals. There's lots of different head shapes out there. So by taking a sweatband and, and, and customizing that exact size and doing a sweatband fitting, which we do um, before we assemble the hat, then we're guaranteeing by taking that exact size and then making the hat around the sweatband, ensuring that we get a perfect fit makes for the best hat process. Just an aspect of the shop. Um, over the years of being a hat maker and collecting stuff, I've collected hundreds and hundreds of these cute little things behind us. And these, most people think that they're a salesman sample, as if a salesman went out and said, hey, this is our new season's hat in a gray and a black, and go ahead and buy this. That was never what these were. These are technically gift certificates or a gift box. And you can see all the brands did them around Christmas time. You would have never bought husband 
grandfather, you know, lover, whoever they were, a hat off the shelf. What you would have done is taken a hat you picked, had it put in a special little box, and then you would have gifted that them. Then they could have gone into the store and redeemed this hat because they, they did the same thing we do here now. They make hats custom made. So at that point, the gentleman would have gotten uh, his head measured, talk about what he's going to wear that hat for, outdoors, dress, whatever it might be, and, and he'd end up with a custom hat. Okay, so everyone always asks, like, what's the proper care for a hat or what they need to do? The hats that we're making here in the shop are got at least a, a large portion of beaver or are a beaver blend or 100% beaver and are a good quality fur. And so t the care for them is, is every time you use them, you just want to brush them off. Sometimes you might go through a rain or a snowstorm and they need to dry out and ventilating them properly so they dry out well is always key but also having a good hat man is key because we can always tune up a hat and, and straighten it out. Rebuilding a hat is always a possibility if the fur is quality, and we love to do that here. More importantly, daily maintenance on a hat, if you're using it daily, is of course brushing it off. And there's a couple different brushes that we, we like here. This is a tighter, more of a shoe brush. It's angled the shape of a hat brim, so you can get some of that, that dust off or any debris that's sticking. Um, the reason we want to kick that off is because if your hat gets wet or you sweat into it and then that dust clings to that sweat and dries, that's when you get a problem. If we knock some of that off and don't ever let it set into the fur, then we'll, you know, our fur will live a lot longer than, than expected. Another option is a whip. We use these downstairs and a whip brush allows us to hit quick and not do any damage. It's a lot softer bristle and we can really get in there and kind of set fur at an angle. Another brush that I like, and we make this here at the shop, it's all hand turned here in Utah with fine, this is ebony wood to be exact, we put a leather piece in here that says our name, but this is horsehair that we've sourced here in Utah. But this, if we just do this daily and get your hat looking fresh, that'll care for your hat a lot longer and they'll live longer. Inside of the hat is really, this This is unfinished, we need to put a liner in it, but the inside of the hat is, is a new liner. We can put a new sweatband, new liner at any time for someone. So obviously we have a number of things that help us make hats better. And so I've collected up some shrunken heads that I've brought back from Ecuador and other places that I test little hats on just to make sure we're getting good fit and finish. So very important as a hat maker to have some shrunken heads here in the shop. <laughs> That's epic. <laughs> I tried not to laugh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you.